this lesson, we're going to cover the song Gratitude by Brandon Lake, a really, really pretty song. And there's some different versions out there that show you just some normal chords like G-shaped chords, but I'm going to show you how to actually play it like it really sounds in the recording. And it kind of sounds like two guitars are playing at the same time. And I'm in an alternate tuning to create this effect. So I want to cover that with you, the chord shapes, and then we'll cover the picking pattern as well. So let's jump in. Um, I spent some time with this trying to figure out different ways to create uh, that actual sound to get all of the notes and, and had to experiment with something. And I think I figured it out uh, with something that works, at least for me, and it's Dagad tuning um, with one twist. So we've, we've covered that before in alternate tunings. This is the mo one of the most popular ones where you're taking your low E down to a D. And then normally you take your little two strings down a whole step. So E would go down to a D and then your B would go down to an A. But what's different here is we're just gonna take this B string back a whole, whole step to an A. And then leave the E string where it is. It's a really weird sound. And then we're gonna capo two. So it's a very kind of unique um, alternate tuning that we're using here. Uh, very uh, creative with whoever came up with this song. It's really uh, smart and creative. And, and we're gonna be playing as though we're in A. So kind of A capo two puts you in the key of B. So we're in the key of B, but our chord shapes are, are a little different and you probably haven't used them anywhere else. Um, but once you learn them, you can actually use them for songs in the key of B. So this is just something to keep in your back pocket. I love this kind of stuff of just something different and normal. So let's cover the, the chord shapes first. You can think of them in terms of Nashville numbers, uh, which I prefer, or you can think of them in terms of their actual chord name. So I'll cover both as we do it, but the first chord is your one chord, which is your B. If you've ever played an A, a sus two, this is the same shape. It's kind of an A without your ring. Doesn't matter which fingers you use for it. Uh, your next chord is going to be your six minor chord, and this is the next chord in the, the intro and the verse progression. So what you'll do here is take three fingers all together, pinky, ring, middle, and then put them on the fourth fret of the low strings. A little out of tune here. Get that close. And then you're gonna follow it with your pointer finger on the second fret of the third string from the bottom. And then you'll keep the same shape for your next chord. You'll just take these three fingers and move them to the second fret. And then your pointer finger goes to the uh, first fret where it was on the second of that third string. So this is your F sharp chord, which is also your five chord. So we've gone one, to six minor, to five, and then we're gonna go to four. This is a really cool chord. Just slide that pointer finger back to the second fret. So this is your four chord, which is an E. And that's re really all you need for the song. Um, there's some other chords at the very end, uh, but for the main part of the song, that's all you need. Those are your chord shapes. And then you're combining those chord shapes with the picking pattern. And the reason why it's important to do these chord shapes is if you miss a string or, or you accidentally mess up, it's gonna sound good still because you have your full chord that you're playing. So your fingers will know um, what to do, and if they don't and they mess up, it sounds great still. Sometimes I do play this very first chord with, um, I don't play both fingers, I'll just do one of them, uh, because I'm, I'm mainly focused on how to get to the next chord easily, which is the three fingers here. So I do kind of cheat a little bit on the first chord. So let's talk now about your right hand and your picking pattern. This is pretty tricky. It's gonna take some time to get used to. I've been messing with it for uh, the last couple of hours, just getting comfortable with it because it's so different. Um, but the, the trick here is for your thumb to cover the bass notes and kind of the alternating low part, which you hear in the guitar. 
and then your other three fingers get the high part of what you hear as the kind of offbeat notes. So I use my ring, middle, and then pointer. And those guys are doing the same thing pretty much the whole time. They're, they're just playing the offbeats, you're in six eight. So it's uh, the offbeat of the six eighth notes. And then your, uh, your thumb is getting the bass note and it's different with each chord. So let's cover that. So the first one uh, with the one chord, Um, it's a really good chord to start with because you're gonna you're gonna have um, just kind of a steady one two three four five six. By the way, I've made um, tabs for this if you'd like to read tabs, so you can just follow along there if you'd like. Um, but we'll just stay with the that A string two three four five six, and then I'm gonna um, have the off beats ping ponging back and forth with my three fingers. Then have these three guys ready for the next chord. And what you'll do here is your pattern here is that low string followed by the A string. So your sixth followed by your fifth. And then again, your, your off beats um, every other time are, are these three. So those stay the same the whole time. chord shape and this is your five chord same thing as far as your right hand is concerned and then your E chord um, as far as your right hand is concerned same thing here so once you get that picking pattern it lasts for uh, those few chords So there you get kind of the low end and the high end mixed together and it sounds really cool. Um, what you can do to practice too, if, if, it's, if your brain just isn't letting you do that, is just to practice the low part, practice the high part separately. So um, you can start with the A, four, five, six, and that next chord. Those are your on beat notes. And if you accidentally hit another one, it sounds fine, so you can do that um, as well. So um, typically in the verse and in the chorus, you're gonna have two measures of six eight, so two measures of the chord. So we'll be playing each one twice. So one, two, three, four, five, six. one, two, three, four, five, six. next chord. Then uh, the only difference on the chorus is you just shift which chords uh, go where. So um, we're still going to start with the B or the one. Um, and then that third chord that you played, that uh, F sharp, which is our uh, five chord, you're gonna go to that next. So it's... And then from there, you'll go to your E chord, which is your four, four chord. And then you'll share um, G sharp minor. It's really just one measure, so it feels like a half measure, but it's one measure of six, eight into your F sharp, uh, which would be a six minor into five. Um, and then you're back to where you started on the verse or uh, the intro.
So again, this song is different. I love it. It's it's really beautiful. It's different. It's unique. Um, it has an alternate tuning. And um, these chords, by the way, if you want to strum uh, with this song, it works great. So if you ever had another song in B and you were somehow in this tuning, um, you could use those chords for that song in B too. So this is maybe something you could experiment with further and try with other songs as well. So um, hope you enjoyed that. That's how to play the song Gratitude.